Um, Zola was a really interesting project when we first started. Um, first of all, we watch Silicon Valley every week, and there's so many parallels. And the hardest thing that we've done to date is coming up with a name. Um, so I'll give you a background story around how we came up with the name. Um, we basically thought about all the different words that would match anything related to wedding space. Um, and it turns out one of our um, partners, Kevin Ryan, um, who you see here, his, how does this work? All right, let's do this. So Kevin Ryan, um, I'm sure you guys know him. Um, he started Guilt, he founded Mongo, he founded um, Business Insider. His son um, interned for us and he looked up all these names and he came up with Zola. And it turns out that it means happiness and love in Zulu. And that's the source of Zola, the name. It turns out that it's a baby of character in Grey's Anatomy and um, lots of interesting parallels. But let me talk about the founding team. So Shanlin Ma is my partner. She, we work together at Gilt and she's probably the best product manager I've ever worked with. Um, Kevin Ryan, founder of Gilt, and Felix Lung was also ex-Gilt. He was one of the technical leads there. He went on to um, become a CTO at Host Committee and we all wanted to work together again. So, um, talk briefly about what we did at Gilt. So, um, I think this is important because it's, it's interesting to note our background. So, Shannon and I launched the first iPhone app together. We launched the iPad app together before iPads were available. We also launched a site called Guilt Taste. I don't know if you've checked it out. Um, it's no longer live, but it's one of the most amazing um, projects we worked on together. So design, really compelling experience, and creating a mode of experience is something that we love. So we're thinking about um, what kind of company we should start. So we had this amazing advisor, Kevin Ryan, started a bunch of companies. So we pitched about 20 ideas to Kevin, and this is the one idea that we all felt strongly about. And the reason being, our backgrounds in e-commerce, our backgrounds in mobile, design, technology, and product, this is where we thought we can actually kill it. Right? So what we did was we actually looked around um, the web, and we felt that there's a huge lack in terms of innovation within the wedding registry space. So our goal was to really reimagine what the wedding experience could be for the modern couple. So if you look at the space, there are about 1.5 million couples who um, create registries. And they usually create registries seven months before the wedding date. It's kind of interesting to know. Um, it's about 10 billion. In terms of market size, um, eight billion for gifts that are purchased at, um, for the for the um, for the registry, and then two million for two billion, sorry, for um, couples to complete their registry. We're also seeing tons of change in terms of um, what marriage means, right? So, 74% of couples actually live together before they get married, right? Which means that you probably have a lot of stuff already for um, for your home. We're also seeing the median age of couples that are getting married go up. And with the same-sex uh, marriage legislation, there are 37 states that have legalized that. So we want to really think about what it means to create a registry now. So we looked around. This is today, right? So take a look at this. This feels like 2001. I don't know if you guys, maybe you guys are too young to remember 2001, but um, from our standpoint, it looked like a checkout cart. It looked very transactional. There was no concept of gift giving from our standpoint. We want this, you buy us that. Right? So we thought there was a huge opportunity to really um, bring back what it means to give a gift. And even the folks who created apps, you can take a look at it, but you know, not really all that inspiring, in our opinion. So um, what we did was we basically sat in a room for about a week just thinking through what we could do to innovate in this space. 
Um, so it was interesting that we did that first to just kind of ideate and really think about what the opportunities are. And then we actually went to Bloomingdale's and Macy's and went through the registry process again. So I got married in 2005, um, and very honestly, it hasn't changed, right? So it's the same experience that I went through almost 10 years ago. We also met with a bunch of couples. So guilt, we have a thousand people. We knew a bunch of people who were getting married. So what we did, we just talked to them. Um, really understand what the pain points are, what are the opportunities, where can we really innovate? And what we realized that there are a bunch of patterns that came out through our conversations. So um, a lot of folks felt like I did when they were going through the registry process. Can it be much more compelling? Where is the innovation here? It felt like something that was built almost 10 years ago. Um, another pain point that we found out was that to create a registry that you really want, you had to register in multiple places, right? Um, you might want furniture from West Elm. You might want kitchen equipment from Williams-Sonoma. Um, but they didn't overlap. So what, we had, what, co uh, what couples have to do is actually register multiple places to get that entire spectrum of things that they want. We also um, talked to a bunch of couples who added a bunch of stuff to their registry and decided to return everything because what they really wanted was a couch, right? So I don't know if for the married folks if you guys did that, but um, surprisingly, um, a notion that came up over and over again. And then the delivery and returns of products. So gifts get purchased a month before your wedding date and two weeks after your wedding. That's when most of the gifts get purchased. So a month before your wedding date is the worst time. You're so stressed out thinking about the preparation to the wedding day, right? Um, the last thing you're really thinking about is our boxes flowing through into your apartment, right? You can imagine what a shit show that is. Um, the other pain point was returns. So what happens when you ask for a 12 piece dinner set and you only get four? So in my apartment, we have a closet of unfinished um, sets just sitting there. We don't know what to do with it. It's been 10 years. We've never used it. So, and surprisingly not uncommon. And one thing that people loved is a gun, right? So at these, you know, at the department stores, you can get a, you know, a symbol gun, and you can basically scan barcode scanners, and it adds it to your registry. That's the one thing that consistently we've heard over and over again what people loved, mostly guys. <laughs> so I just want to walk through um, what we built. So thinking about the modern couple and thinking about millennials and thinking about how they interact with the internet, what we wanted to do was really bring um, that commonality or that experience to the wedding registry. So um, one of the key things is we know that folks are going from mobile to, to the web to their, um, to their iPads at various stages, but they're using various um, services across the different platforms. So we wanted to make sure that our technology supported that. Another thing that was important for us from a company culture standpoint was marriage equality. So we basically, from the very beginning, we introduced this concept on registration to capture whether you're a bride or groom. Right? Knowing whether you're a bride and groom, it can be really thoughtful around the next step when you receive the welcome email to show you a photo that is relevant. So what we wanted to do is add bits of thoughtfulness in this experience. We also wanted to change a dialogue of what it means to give a gift. Can we help couples communicate why they want it? So if we know that you're moving into a new apartment in Fort Greene and you see the list of products that you're asking for, that context provides a little more information about why you might want to give that gift or why you want that gift. So we wanted to create a platform that would allow that to shine through. And look, it's kind of cool. You can see their personality shine through, especially through Gabby and Andy. I think it's really neat. And it's basically the same template, right? So, 
So one thing that was really important to us was can we find a way to create a registry where you only need to share one URL with your guests, right? Um, can I register for an all-clad cookware set along with Nick's season tickets with building a cash fund to help pay for my honeymoon? And what we've done is built a, essentially a site which can curate and collect all those things in one place. And we also know that we will never have all the assortment that we would want, right? We know that we'll never get Tiffany to sign on to Zola to add their merchandise um, and, and sell it through our store. So we want ways that you can actually pull those products in. So we basically built a little UPC reader, very much like your gun, but on your phone, that where you can suck in that product. Group gifting. So this is a pattern that we've seen all over the web. Kickstarter, right? basically drew inspiration from, uh, from that experience and brought it into the registry experience. And anecdotally, I think a big point that um, my experience in, uh, when I was getting married was that I actually wanted an $800 espresso machine on my registry. And my wife told me that was obnoxious, right? Because who's going to buy that for you? So um, kind of a little memory in my past. So I want to find a way to really address that. And I think this is one way that you allow multiple guests to chip in for that one thing that you love. We also hear that um, couples, um, when they first create their registry, they don't know what to add to their registry. What should I add? What do I need? Um, and one concept that we directly stole from Gilt was this concept around theme sales. Can you create a collection, a curated collection of products based on a style? based on a theme, based on um, a lifestyle, or curated by specific um, experts. So you'll see one collection in the center there from Molly Sims. So that's a celebrity that we worked with to curate a collection of products that she would want on her registry. Another question that we get often is, how many gifts should I add? Right. So based on number of guests, um, we can basically give you a guideline in terms of the various price ranges of products you might want in your registry. And what's fascinating about this is when we went to Bloomingdale's, we got that piece of paper based on 300 guests. This is the breakdown of gifts that you should add. Um, we thought that was really useful and we tweaked the algorithm a bit. Um, but the idea is fundamentally, how can I, how many gifts do I need um, at different price ranges based on the number of guests that are coming to my wedding. And another thing that's really important for, for Zola, you can't see it on the screen here, but um, we basically source about 8,000 products on our site, right? We don't take photos of all the products, and we actually get the vendor-produced images directly from our vendors. Now, if you've seen vendor-produced images, just go to Macy's, you can see all of it. There's the lack of consistency across the entire um, experience. So one thing that we, we did was um, we added a gray tint with a slight gradation, and you can't see it here, but what it does is it actually allows um, products from a KitchenAid to a, you know, a sleeping bag and a gas grill to actually look consistent across the entire experience. And then one interesting feature that we're really proud of is this concept of how can we make that shipping pain point better? So we basically came up with a concept around gift tracker and being able to send a gift when you actually want it. Right? So what, you, what happens on Zola is that you, when you get a gift, you get a little notification on your phone, or you get an email. And what we ask you is, do you want to send it now? Or do you want us to hold it? And once you hit send now, we trigger the order, the order gets shipped, right? And chances are, if you don't want that item, you can also convert it to credits and get something else right here. So there's no need to lug the China set, half complete China set, or, um, 
or, um, or products that you added to your registry but you don't really want, you can just do it all online. Um, and why shouldn't you be able to? So there are also things that we decide not to build. So initially, you know, when Shen and I were talking, we were like, wouldn't it be cool if we can leverage our friends to do some work for us, right? Um, I'm sure you guys, for folks who are married, a bunch of friends who think they know everything about the registry process, they're like, let them take care of it. Maybe they can help. Um, turns out the couples um, find it extremely stressful. And every time we pitched it, um, turns out that no one was really, not no one, very few people were interested in, uh, in this because they felt that they, they would lose control over their wedding process. Um, so it's still in the back burner, it's still an idea, um, but we'll see if we can come up with, a, with an opportunity around this. We also know that thank you notes are a huge pain point for couples, right? You get all these gifts, you have to write the thank you notes, um, and, um, and no one wants to do it. It's after their wedding, you know, they had a great time in their honeymoon. Um, it's the last thing people want to do. But it's etiquette, you need to make sure you do this. So um, right now what we do is we allow folks to export a CSV, you can upload directly into paperless post, and you're done. But we think there's a huge opportunity to make that better, much more integrated, and much more seamless. So this is something we're not gonna do right now, but something we're thinking about in the next couple of quarters. So what do we learn? Um, one of the biggest learnings that I have is that um, when we launched Zola, we thought, millennials, do we need to support older browsers? Do we need to support um, IE8? Turns out we have a huge range of um, um, guests who buy gifts for their couples, right? So it turns out a lot of older folks have older browsers, um, typically a machine that they inherited from their sons and daughters. Um, and we actually had to go back and make sure our checkout process was completely um, functional in IE8. So huge learning there. Um, we also design our checkout process in a way that um, we try to make sure that it's super simple, right? So one example is um, on Zola, you can actually ship it to the couple or you can ship it to yourself, right? Some people want to bring the gifts to the wedding. Um, initially, we were testing a design. It was a segmented control. You can actually pick one or the other, right? We had another design, a check, um, a simple radio button, right? On and off. Guess which one, right? The radio button. It was just clear, people knew how to use it, and we decided, let's keep it very simple, let's go with, with the process that um, our older guests will be able to use, and we also know that um, the younger guests will be totally fine with that design approach. Um, we also didn't realize how important design was when we were pitching to big vendors. So think about a 12-month-old company talking to a company like Dyson, right? or talking to Allclad, these huge vendors that do huge business, businesses in Bloomingdale's, these established retailers. Um, the design of the site helped project a much larger image of what Zola is, and much more confidence and trust in what we will do to help promote their product through our experience. So that was really critical. Um, we also constantly go back and iterate on our designs, right? It's, Rarely do we get it right the first time. We're constantly trying to make things easier to use. And the reason behind that is because, not only is that just good practice, but um, you have to understand the con landscape of the wedding registry in, within the context of wedding planning. There's so much going on in that process. And the key here is, can I get it done quickly? Can I get it done easily? Can I get it done um, efficiently? Um, and another point that I think in terms of learning is that um, given that one of the founders of the company, design is such an important piece in our experience. And it's not just what I do, it's also very important from a merchandising standpoint. It's very important from a marketing standpoint, obviously. It's also important from a engineering standpoint. And what we try to do in our organization is really bring um, folks into the process of creating a product. And the first thing that I've said when we launched was, everyone here is a product person, right? Regardless of what you do, 
we live and die by what we produce and the interactions that our customers um, use every day. So um, it's amazing to get feedback around our experience directly from a merchandiser and try to incorporate that when we see that being a huge, um, potentially having a huge impact improving the experience. Another interesting thing is that um, the wedding registry experience is very seasonal, right? So everyone signs up on December 26th. That's when it starts kicking off, right? And it goes through um, probably March and April. And all of a sudden, weddings start in May, and now people are buying gifts, right? So if you think about that seasonality, what we do is understanding that seasonality, understanding how, um, when people are doing what, we prioritize projects based on that, right? So if we know that um, um, this effort will impact the acquisition side of, uh, for marketing, um, we may not prioritize that in June. We may prioritize that to start in October to get ready for December. So that's been an interesting learning lesson in terms of how we prioritize projects based on our business. And then one thing that's really important is CS feedback for us. We really um, take every feedback to heart. Not that we execute on everything that people say, but um, our feeling is that when we hear something, when it's an issue from one person, we're assuming there are probably 150 to 200 people who have the same problem. So we take it very seriously, and if we notice that it's an issue, we try to address it very quickly. And I think the most important part is building an amazing team. And I think everyone probably knows this, but um, one of the proudest things that I think um, that um, I would point to is um, our team. And I, we wouldn't be able to do what we do day to day in, day out without a phenomenal bunch. And that's it. Thank you very much. Um, so quick question. Customer feedback was something that came up time and again mm -hmm. um, in your wonderful talk. Before you started, where did you find people to get feedback from? Oh, so you know, you'd be surprised how many folks are getting married when they're 20, uh, 30, 31 to 35. So um, we basically reached out to friends of friends. We basically reached out to probably everyone at Guild and our network to find folks who are within that range. And you know, some folks got married a few years ago, but we still reached out to them to get their feedback. Cool. Yeah. Uh, any questions from the crowd? Yes. I want to ask about the merchandising. Um, do you purchase any of the products here? Uh, so I would say about 90% of our merchandise is dropship. Right, and there are a bunch of vendors who, or a handful of vendors who will not drop ship, and we basically take inventory from a very small segment of those vendors. So right now we don't, um, and I think we think that there is a huge opportunity to collaborate with retailers, um, but right now we've been working directly with the brands. Thank you very much. It was wonderful. Thank you.